My name's Kat and I'm the children's librarian here at the Tewksbury Public Library. Welcome to this week's Art Not Craft video where we look into a few different artistic mediums and see what we want to play around with. This week we're going to be talking about charcoal and if you thought chalk pastels were messy, just wait. Charcoal comes in many different forms. Vine charcoal is made out of grapevines or willow tree branches and it is extremely light and it will make a nice soft gray line. That's what you want to do for outlines to get your general sketch down on the page. Um, you can also take the side and kind of get a good background of gray there if you want. Um, there we go. You don't want to do your entire piece in these. They're extremely brittle and they can break really easily. And they also don't make as dark of a color as you can get. So this won't be probably your main use, but they're very good to have. You also can get compressed charcoal, um, which comes in a couple different forms. This is a stick form. So we have the soft, is extremely soft. It's very flaky, it'll rub and uh, smudge very easily. We have a medium. And then we also have the hard. And you can tell the biggest difference between these, again, when you're trying to smudge, because the soft will smudge a lot, the medium will smudge a, a little bit, and the hard will not smudge nearly as much. Um, I didn't press down on the soft as much as I should have here to give you a good idea, but you can smudge these with whatever you like. Um, we have blending stumps, which we talked about in our pencil drawing, where you can go in and do a very small, specific area. Um, we also have the form called the tortillon, which is a hollow paper version of this, again, to do small, very controlled areas and these will pick up the charcoal very well, so you can then take that and go draw somewhere else with it for shading if you want to. When you're done with those, you have this sandpaper and you just rub it right on the sandpaper and it will take the marks off and it's clean and good to go again. Other ways to blend, of course you can use your fingers. Mine are pretty dirty right now, so I don't want to get all my smudges on all of the different places. You can, uh, you can use your fingers, but also the oils in your fingers make it harder to erase if you want to later, so just be aware of that. We also have things like, um, this is a natural sea sponge, and this will make it really nice and soft. And this is a piece of chamois. And again, that blends and also lightens because it picks up a lot of the charcoal. So that is good for doing a larger area um, and getting a softer look. You can also get your charcoal compressed like this in pencil form. And these are great. They also come in hard, medium, and soft, um, but they make a much finer line. So these are more for detail work, um, which is nice if that's what you're looking for. Sometimes with charcoal, it's nice to get this big design, but you wanna have some detail in there as well. You might also wanna have some highlights in there, and that's what these are for. We have white chalk is the most common you'll see, and that will go right over top and give you a highlight. Um, less common, but also frequently used. We have a yellow one here to make a good, uh, a good highlight area, and also a red. Again, the white is the one you'll see most commonly, but these are neat because they can really bring attention to a different area that you're working on. The other things you might need, of course, are erasers. We have our regular eraser here, any kind will do, and you can just go ahead and erase the charcoal just like you would a pencil, and that makes a real nice clean line. If you want something a little more controlled, we have our kneaded or gummed eraser. Again, we talked about these in our pencil episode. Um, these can be shaped into any form you want, so you can make a small area and erase just this one specific spot, or you can use it to kind of pick up some of what's down there and erase just a specific area, get like a texture like that. Now this is gonna get pretty dirty pretty easily. 
All you need to do is just knead it back together. And after a couple minutes, it'll kind of clean itself and you're good to go. When you're choosing paper, you wanna make sure that it has a little bit of a texture to it or a tooth, because that's what the charcoal is going to hold onto to stay on the paper. I have regular white construction paper here, and I also have a few pieces of a really nice Bristol board um, that my coworker Katie gave me, thank you Katie, so that I can really demonstrate the, the texture on here. You don't wanna use printer paper for this, because it'll just slide right off. Your, your design will not stay how you want it to be. It doesn't have to be expensive paper though. As I said, I have construction paper and newsprint also works extremely well for this. You just have to be careful you don't press down hard enough that you tear it. I'm gonna try out the different types of things we have here and just see what they do. So I'm gonna play around a little bit. That's a really nice dark charcoal mark there. That's the soft. This one's the medium. I'm keeping them in order in here so I don't forget which one is which. Um, every once in a while, I will find something in my bag that's just a little piece of something and go, well, I don't know exactly what that is. I have to play with it and figure it out. These might not look too different to you where you're watching on, on a video, but from here you can tell that this is extremely soft. And this is pretty soft, but not as soft. And then the hard one is not as soft at all. And of course the vine charcoal, you can doodle with it. You know, make what you like. Draw your outlines. And then you can come back with, you know, the pencil if you want and add a lot of detail or one of the other charcoals. And these are nice too, because if you make different lines and decide like, well, I don't like that line, that's okay. That's just gonna blend in anyhow. These vine ones are really just to get you started and decide what you wanna do and where you want it to go. And it won't erase completely, but if you're doing different lines over top of it, you really can't see what's underneath there anymore. So that's okay. I'm gonna see what these do when you blend with them. Doesn't that make that really cool, soft looking? Yeah, that is really neat. And that, that's pretty cool. And then of course I have my, my chamois here, which is, it kind of picks everything up. So I'm gonna have to wash this, but that kind of lightens and blends it at the same time. You know, you can see the lines in between where you couldn't before. Now, yeah, and just like the blending stump, you can pick that up and carry things around with it if you want to. What would happen if I got some white in here? Make some good highlights. See what it looks like. That's a really nice yellow. I don't know how often I'm going to use it, but it goes down really nicely. And the red as well. This is kind of a red-brown color here. There we go. And that blends in a little bit, but it really stands out. You can really tell that that's where you want your accent to be. Well, now we know how to use it. Why don't we see what we can make? I was thinking, what can we draw today that is black and white and gray that'll give a good idea of what we can do with charcoal. And I printed off this picture of a raccoon. Isn't he adorable? So we're gonna give it a try and play with our materials and just see what it does. And we're not gonna be upset if it doesn't look right because this is our first time doing it. Also, it's construction paper. This is not gonna be museum quality. So I'm gonna start with my vine charcoal here and let's see, his nose is right in the middle. I'm just gonna sketch this out and it kind of goes up like this, right? And then he's got these little white cheeks that go all the way around. It's not exactly right, but you know what? It's all gonna smudge together, it's okay. And then it kind of comes out this way and he's got, goes up like this in the middle. And now around this way, 
got his big eyes here. I think I made this muzzle way too big. Yeah, so probably better. Yeah. And he's got his eye here, which is very, very round. He looks really surprised. We'll do this one as well. And this comes again, kind of out this way. Oops, you know what? I think I made that too high, but that's again, it's okay. This is just our preliminary sketch here. Whoops. And vine charcoal is very fragile and easily to, easy to break. And that's just gonna come up like this. So we've got his, his little face here. And then the white part goes right in the middle. And around the side. And then we've got the top of his little head and his little ears. All right, so this is a pretty good start. One of the tips that I saw when I was looking at tips for beginners um, is one person said that they like to put gray all over the background to start because a white piece of paper can be really intimidating. And I thought that was a really good idea. And we're gonna blend everything together anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I agree. Sometimes when you're looking at a big white piece of paper, it is just overwhelming. I'm gonna take some of the harder charcoal here. I'm gonna start with his nose because I really like the shape of his nose. And you can see in the middle here, it's kind of shiny. So we're gonna leave a little space there for the shine. There we go. And then kind of We can go through and blend this all together. I'm gonna use my finger. You can use whatever you want. We're probably gonna go over this many, many times with the charcoal, so it does not have to be perfect. And you will notice my smudging techniques from my uh, chalk pastel episode as well. And you can see that we used a lighter touch here because we used a lot less and the nose is really, really dark. We're gonna, we've got some white there, but then behind that, yeah, we've got the darker. So we'll use some darker up here. Here we are, we'll make his little ear. There's a shine on his ear too, but we'll put some white in there in a little bit. So we got, we've got that. Looks like it's darker on the inside than on the outside. I'm just gonna make it darker here and then we can put that little white shine on there when we're ready for it. We've got, I'm assuming that this ear, since it cuts off here, it's probably the same as, as around this one. I'm not positive because I don't know this raccoon personally, but you know, it's probably pretty close. Again, that's right around there because he's got that white stripe. I really like looking at a picture while I'm doing this because when you're trying to do something from memory, even if it's something that you know really, really well, it's hard to remember exactly where things go. All right, let me blend these in. You can see that he kind of goes off on the in the background here, and that's cool. We'll just kind of give him that shadow. Side of this one doesn't work as well as the vine charcoal. That's okay. You know, what? I'm gonna take some of the softer and go back and, and make some more definition here. I'm gonna make the eye. And again, there's a nice gleam in his eye. So we wanna leave some white right at the top here. You can always go back and add, but easier if you don't have to draw over something else. Except this one too. Go ahead and 
put that in. He's got a lot of, you know, furry bits. I'm gonna go kind of in the direction of the fur because we want to see the, the movement a little bit, you know? And a little bit like this over the eye because he's got some eyebrows there. Again, go in and get some of the, and you can see how this is a lot darker than the, uh, the harder charcoal we were using. It's a lot smudgier too. And you still can see the lines that we drew. It's just a lot smudgier. But that's why you use, you know, you layer. You layer a lot with charcoal. There we go. I'm gonna put some down here as well. You can see there's kind of a a little bit of a, a shadow like right under his nose. We'll just put a little bit of that in and smudge it in. It might have been a little too much, but that's okay. We have an eraser. And underneath here, you get the, the shadow of the chin and we'll, we'll kind of fill that in a little bit too. It doesn't need to be really defined. And a lot of times in charcoal, especially when you get to the edge of the page, the the picture just kind of trails off and ends, and that's okay. You know, it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. You can just kind of bring it down as far as you want to bring it down and leave it alone, and it'll be fine. So this part is not perfectly white, of course. We're gonna make that a little bit of gray. I think that looks pretty good. I'm sure there's lots that I'm missing, but that's not a bad raccoon for a first try. I'm going to go in with my white here and add the highlight to the eye. It is right the uh, glare on top there and also a little bit around the edge. There's a little bit of white because there's a little wetness around the eye. We're going to color in this. We could give him some of the whiskers that you see. And then we can add in a few details. We've got the top of the ear is very white. We'll, we'll add that in just a little bit on the edge there to kind of give it some depth. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, we could color this in, but you know, we really don't need to color in the gray part because it's gray. It's not white. There is some depth. There is some texture in there. I and mean, we could go back and add a little bit of texture in here as well. Now, if we really wanted to we can then take our pencils and go through and add some definition, some little hairs, and you can really kind of see those. That gives it a little extra depth. You can go in and add, oh, whatever you want. If we want to take our blending stump and make sure that the eye is really, really dark. There we go. And I want that to stay really, really dark. So we're gonna go over it and make sure that that area is exactly what we want it to be. The same with the nose. We want it to be really dark and really defined. There we go. It doesn't have as much of the smudginess as you'll see in some of the other areas. Isn't that pretty? So there we go. We have our raccoon. Now, when it's all done, as we know, this smudges a lot. One of the things you can do is you can get a fixative spray that you need to use outside, by the way, because it can have a very strong odor, but you can spray it on your painting and there are a couple different types. You can get one that you do on your finished piece and it you'll never be able to work on it again because it's just gonna coat it with a clear coat and it's done. There is also a kind called workable fixative where you can then go back and work on things, but it is not as strong and things might still smudge a bit. Um, if you're someone like me, who's just doing this for fun, and no, I don't want it to smudge, but this only took us a few minutes to make. It's, it's not the most exciting artwork in the universe. I can actually use some hairspray on this. It will darken the color a little bit, just to warn you, but Again, I'm not really going for museum quality, so sometimes that's what you want. 
If you're not sure you're done with it or you don't feel like spraying it or maybe it's really cold outside and you can't, you can put another piece of paper over top of it. You can use tracing paper or just another piece of construction paper, clean side down, right over top, and that will seal it in for you until you're ready to work on it again or frame it or just to keep it in your portfolio for later. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'd love to see what you make. You can follow us here on YouTube and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tooksbury L-I-B. I hope you have a wonderful day.